All right, in this video, we're gonna be looking at a couple of different principles that we covered in some of the other ones and kind of combining them. Um, we'll be using the timer agent and some variables as well as some conditional logic to bring together a request from Chris Mullins um, based on some playlist stuff but before we get into that i want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed over the last week we've quadrupled uh the amount of subscribers we have here and I, I make these videos for fun and i really had no idea there would be such a great response and it's been really cool to see and uh and you know read the comments from people and just see how it's how it's kind of been helping helping you guys out so um if you have any questions or if there's a topic you'd like to see, you can always leave a comment or, um, you know, send me an email. I typically have my email address in the description. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, and if you like these videos or find them helpful, please hit the thumbs up. It helps others to uh, also find them and potentially help them out as well. So Chris wrote in and... I'm gonna address his uh, questions actually in reverse order because the the second question really uh, kind of took my brain for for a ride here, and it took some some real grinding down on this one to to get it to work right. Um, I'm not actually in the room where this is happening, so I'm really only able to monitor it through. <clears throat> composer based on its variable and timer agent but I can tell you from what I was able to figure out this is actually doing what it looks like Chris wants it to do just in an abbreviated amount of time he wrote in and he said ideally a pre playlist press that would be a try state so press state one would play a particular playlist press state two if playing would pause the playlist press state three if the playlist is paused for <clears throat> less than an hour, continue the playing playing the playlist, uh, else restart the playlist. And I might do this a little bit differently than a lot of people out there. Um, I know there's a room control driver. I don't really know much about it. I honestly prefer to write the logic because um, I can test it thoroughly and you know it, I know it'll work when when I go through it. Um, so there might be some guys out there that that see this video and say hey, you know You could do this a little bit easier and that's probably true. I never even knew the room control driver existed I just kind of went about doing it this way um, And I've always had good results. I also kind of enjoy the little brain puzzle here, but to start this off we're going to We're gonna need to make a, a timer that we're gonna call music pause We'll create that <clears throat> and we're going to set that for a value of 25 seconds. So this would represent the the hour and, um, you know, it, instead of 25 seconds, obviously you'd set it for 60 minutes. Um, but for, for my purposes and to be able to show you that this is working, it just makes sense to use a, uh, you know, a shorter timer. Next, we're going to go into variables and we're going to create a string for title and the reason why I'm going with title versus Sonos is Chris was uh, Chris mentioned he was using a native source and the programming is a little bit different when it comes to um, this type of example so I went through this and <clears throat> it took me uh, probably about an hour to get everything just right and I have I have the uh, the string of logic on another button, so if I jump back and forth, uh, it's just because you know it took a little while to get this one right. But so we have our string variable for title, um, and we have our timer agent for music pause. We're going to jump into programming. We're going to go to the keypad. I've already made a button on the keypad um, called music uh, example two. And we're going to start this off. And let me just take a look, quick look here. All 
And looks like I lost my example, so. Single tap, no, press, release, no, no. Button one, maybe. Well, it looks like I lost my code example, so we're gonna have to do this one from scratch again. <clears throat> so we're gonna start this off with a conditional. Uh, based on the room that you're in, similar to what we do whenever we do Sonos. So if the room is off. We're going to have it <coughs> queue up a specific, in this case I'm going to have to do an album because for whatever reason my title playlists don't actually populate in here. <coughs> So we're going to set it to play this particular album. We're going to have it change the variable state to 1. Next, we're going to add an else. And we're going to say if the variable state is 1, then we want to pause the room. The way you do that is you would, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry for the, the, uh, the clogged throat here, it's a little early. But the way you want to do this um, with a native service, unless the service gives you a, a specific set of commands under device specific commands, which title doesn't. Um, basically all you have is for playlist or album. So what you would do is you would go to the actual room you're in and you would use command specific room control for pause. You scroll down here, you find pause, send that over. And we need to start a timer. So we find our timer, we're gonna start the music pause timer. And we're gonna change our variable value to two. <clears throat> Next, what we need to do is add another else. So as, as you go through, you're having if and else. So if the room powers off, do this. Otherwise, do that. You know, if the room is equal to, um, you know, this state, then do this. And <clears throat> if the room is equal to this state, then do this. That's kind of how you go through with, with some of these logic-based um, macros. So next thing we're going to do is say else if the timer is running. Then what we want it to do is stop the timer, which we can do that first. And we want it to continue to play the playlist because that would be if it's running for less than an hour, then it's going to continue. So we drop down to the room and room specific commands and pull up a play command. Put that in there. We need to reset the variable value back to one. So that way it knows it's back basically at step step two, essentially. So if you were to pause it, you know, hit the button again to, for the pause, it's going to go back, it's gonna skip this and go back to here. <clears throat> and 
And for the last step here, what we need to do is tell the controller what to do if the timer has expired. And for that, we would go back to the timer agent and we say, if the timer has expired, then we want to restart the album. And again, we need to change the variable state back to one. So that way it, it starts the loop over. The last <clears throat> two steps we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to tell the room to reset its variable upon off. So that way you're not stuck in a variable loop. So here, if we didn't do this step, what would happen is, is it would be constantly stuck in a single state and it would never restart. And the last thing we need to do is go over to the timer agent and say when the timer expires, set the value to three. And that really should be it. So let's take a look at how this works. I go ahead and look at the agents. Music pause, we'll clear this. And variables, we have no value just yet. So we'll go into programming and we'll pull up that keypad. And we can see what happens is, is it pulled up the particular album that I uh, started to play in the screening room. And let's look at our variable state. We're in one. The timer has stopped. So for the next press, we want this to pause, which it has done. And we should see a timer running. Timer started, and our variable state is in two. Pressing it again brings me back to playing. Take a look at where our variable is, back at one. And our timer had stopped. <clears throat> so for the next part of the example, what I'm gonna do is kind of simulate it's been playing for a little while. So we'll skip through a few tracks. And when I hit the pause, we have a pause. We want to let that timer expire. So we see it's running. See our variable state is in two. When the timer stops, we should see the variable state shift to three. Which, there we have it there. So we can see the timer has stopped. When I hit this again, we should see it jump back to the beginning of the album, which it has done. Unicorn Farm is the first track of the album. So that covers the tri-state uh, example. The only thing I honestly would do differently is um, after the timer expires, I would probably set it so that way the the third button press would be an off command. Um, rather than just restarting a playlist, I, to me that would make a little bit more sense, but you know, this is exactly what, what Chris was looking for as far as his example, I believe anyway. Um, if, if there's anything I missed, you know, feel free to reach out in the comments, Chris, and let me know. But I, I believe this kind of touches on everything you wanted to achieve with this particular button. Um, and lastly, what we're going to see is when I turn this off, the variable state should reset. Yep, and there we go. It goes back to zero. That's going to ensure that this constantly cycles through the way you want it to. So that, that's for Chris's question two. On question one, 
Um, Chris asked, what's the best way to use up and down keypad buttons for volume? Um, he goes on to describe some stuff. And he says, I'm worried about max volume. I don't see an obvious way to limit things. So um, with with control four amps, I believe he had mentioned in another comment he's using some triad and control four amps. I want to say there is a way to limit max volume under in system designer under the the amplifiers, but I can't um, say for certain at the moment. So the best I could come up with as far as setting a max volume. Um, if you have a triad audio matrix, there is an audio property for max volume that you can set. Um, you know, you can dumb it down to 80% or something like that and set it. Um, that will that will give you, you know, you'd have to go through and set that across the rooms. Or you might be able to actually, yeah, you can apply um, the maximum volume to all of them through here. And that would be one way of doing it. Another way... Um, if you go under your room um, where you're doing this keypad programming and you go you click on the room name and you go to miscellaneous you can set a default turn on volume so regardless of where it was when you last had it let's say you're throwing a complete rager and things are just getting crazy you got that shit turned up to 11 um, enabling your default volume to start at a comfortable level will you know probably help you to eliminate the the possibility of turning on something at you know 200 percent max volume at six in the morning when there's people sleeping in the house so again you go under you know the room normally you'll see this um, navigator is your second one and then miscellaneous this might not be enabled, so you enable default volume and you set your audio volume for something that's a little more comfortable that you can always bring up and down. So when it comes to setting um, properties for the up and down keys on a keypad, it's going to depend on your bindings and whether or not you'll be able to do them. So one way you can do it in, in the instance where you have a, a matrix and an amp, um, as long as your bindings are all set correctly, um, you can jump over into the programming and select your, you know, your, your up and down buttons and then have them pulse the preamp in the, um, basically in the circuit. So in this case, it would be the, uh, the triad audio matrix and you'd select the audio output where it's going to raise and lower the volume. There might be another way to do this. Uh, honestly, I'm drawing a blank on it. When when I use it um, for Sonos connections, you know, in, in the shop here, I'll have to take some of this out to do that. Um, it's just a, uh, it's just a matter of connecting the, the binding to the specific, um, source and Sono shows up and for whatever reason the the audio matrix doesn't show up in the connection binding and I'll I'll show you what I'm what I'm talking about. So I need to reset my endpoints here. So for the shop it's going to be the portable Sonos for my audio endpoint and my audio volume. And then on the keypad end, you'll see that Sonos is available as an option. So for down, we would bind it to down, and for up, to up. And then when, since this is tracking over here, I actually want to make this 
set this to the wrong button. I'll set this to the earlier example and we'll pull that up so you can see it work. So if we call that up in the shop, I can raise and lower volume. You can see the, uh, the slider move in there. So that, that really wraps up uh, everything for this video. Uh, again, I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed and has reached out in the comments. Um, it's been cool tackling some of these examples and showing you guys um, the the properties of you know timers and uh, conditional logic and stuff like that. I hope it's helping you know some of the the newer programmers out there as well as everybody else who who seems to be reaching out and and looking for some answers. I make these videos purely for fun. But um, if you did enjoy this video or found it helpful, please hit the thumbs up. It will help others to find our channel and see some of these videos and potentially help them out as well. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And, you know, if, if you are subscribed, thank you. And please continue to reach out with your questions or topics for future videos. Thanks a lot.